good evening good afternoon good morning to people joining us from uh, across the world uh, thank you so much for joining the session your host for the day will be uh, me and my colleague priyanka uh, hi priyanka there you go hi so in the starting few probably for 10 to 15 minutes uh, we'll quickly start with the why part right so as to why you should probably consider moving to zoho and zoho mail and what additional value zoho can add to the way your company works uh, including your cost benefits and others we'll also discuss some customer stories some uh, you know uh, stories from our customers who's moved uh, to zoho mail from something like a google workspace or microsoft 365 this will give you an additional perspective of how people's experience moving to zoho has been as well uh, from there, I'll hand it over to uh, my colleague Priyanka, who will take you through the in-depth migration strategy. So this is where things get even more uh, interesting. So we'll talk about how you can move your company over to Zoho and Zoho Mail. Uh, do you want to do it in multiple steps? Can you do it all at once? We'll discuss all the different strategies that you can take to safely migrate your company uh, over to Zoho as well. And we'll also finally discuss what are the prerequisites that you can give it give to our team so that they can do the migration free for you as well so we do have a free migration assistance uh, option available in case you don't want to do the migration by yourselves you can always come back to our team and then they will help you do that as well so in case you want to take that route so we will tell you what are the prerequisites that you can come to us with so that we'll make it easy and quick for you as well so a quick information on Zoho Mail. We've been around for 15 years now. In fact, it's our birthday month this month. We've been we've been celebrating the 15 years of Zoho Mail uh, this month. Uh, pretty, pretty excited about that. We have over 16 million users using Zoho Mail every day on a daily basis, logging in their inboxes. Talking about our Indian perspective, we have over 22 Indian languages that are supported in the interface. And it's also, of course, integrated with OpenAI and you know ChatGPT along with our own uh, internal AI as well to help you compose and um, you know, e you know <clears throat> summarize your emails better as well. So if you're wondering, that is there as well. Zoho also keeps adding value to your subscriptions every now and then, which means our products get even more awesome uh, every other week or month. Uh, this can be in terms of security updates. This can be in terms of you know feature updates. This means that every other month, we keep introducing or adding more stuff to the products that kind of give you more value uh, over the period of time to your existing subscriptions as well. Most of these are not. Uh, additionally charge in fact we do not uh, really charge for extra features per se whatever you you've subscribed most of them come with along with your existing subscription as well but this is something uh existing other vendors do as well if you're wondering okay this is something the the googles and microsoft is do do as well how does zoho really stand out for you and what kind of how can zoho add value to your life by moving to Zoho. So probably I'll explain this in three quick points before you know handing over to Priyanka for uh, the migration part. Let's start with three different aspects, starting with better value for larger enterprises. I believe a lot of you here are either running a larger enterprise or representing a, a, a larger enterprise on probably on the IT front or on the business front and things like that. We believe or our customers have also told us that Zoho is actually a better value for larger implementations going forward for them. Uh, it's a really practical uh, option for them to take. It cuts almost off the straight numbers if you're talking about, it cuts off to uh, almost 60% of your, of your average cost in your billings in their company. This is probably an average that we've taken uh, uh, from numbers we've been receiving after surveying our users who's moved from uh, Google Workspace and Microsoft 365. It's around, you know, the ballpark figure will be around 50 to 60 and 65 percent and things like that. But the mind blowing fact here really is that we're able to do this without cutting any corners in security or compliance. So we are top notch in terms of security, we're top notch in terms of compliance as well. You know, Zoho as a company itself is a very privacy first company, which means we are not into the ad business at all. So even the free versions of Zoho Mail or any of our products in that sense is completely ad free. We do not engage in taking your data and selling your data over to the uh, other vendors as well. 
Plus, we also have HIPAA compliance added to our arsenal recently, which means those of you in the healthcare sector would know how what that means as well. Which means it's just a lot more secure to handle your patient information and the others through the HIPAA compliance that we have uh, across the world. Of course, we have not cut corners in the, the in the way we are ready for or the scalability factor for our enterprises as well. You have everything that you would expect in terms of security control controls, encryption controls, uh, and also an open developer platform for you to expand what Zoho does for you in terms of uh, the connectivity with other apps that you already use as well. Uh, our pricing with Zoho is pretty straightforward. You pick a plan, you add how many other users you want. There's absolutely no uh, user limits at all to any of these plans that we have. For example, if you have the lowest plan that we have is the main light plan, which probably starts with uh, at around 50 rupees, you can add how many other people that you want in your organization to that plan. So compared to the other options out, out there in the market, you can add how many other people, there's no upper limit per se, there's no 10,000 or 300 or 400 or 500 limits that the competition usually has. So that's one benefit that probably you can think of where you can add value to each of your subscriptions by putting them into how many of them, in, I mean, how many of them you want into the right bucket that you think is valuable for them. Um, there's also no storage uh, restrictions as to you have to move to this plan in order to you know upgrade your storage and things like that. You can add storage. There are storage add-ons where uh, you can you know select, have it for the select number of people in your company in case you want them as well. So you don't have to buy storage for all your people. You just can actually buy add-on storage add-ons for select people in your company and then just pay for that as well. You can also mix and match between these plans. So this is something I'd highly recommend as well, because this is clearly talking about costs here, and this clearly optimizes a lot of the cost as well. We, in fact, a lot of our users uh, that come on board onto Zoho Workplace and Zoho Mail kind of make use of this. For example, how this works is that uh, you have some people on a 5GB plan, you have some people on a 10GB plan, uh, you can actually have both of these plans within the same company. So you can choose which kind of section of your company should be in this, this the lower end plan, which section of your company should be in the higher end plan. Of course, if you have people on your desk who, who would want the entire collaboration suite, you can do that as well with the workplace plan. So you can mix uh, the mail only plans. You can have the higher mail, mail plans and as well as the workplace plans in the same uh, subscription that you pay with us as well, which is an additional bonus that you can get in order to really optimize the subscriptions that you're doing, right? You don't really want to kind of subscribe for something that people don't use and then give it to the entire organization as the entire suite as well. Moving on from there, uh, we'll talk about the unified experiences. So if you are already on the Zoho ecosystem, uh, Zoho Mail, having Zoho Mail is actually a cherry on the top. For example, here is this particular uh, use case where you get an email. You are a CEO, or you are you are you are you know administrating one of their uh, departments. There is a customer who is visibly upset about something. They're like, okay, things are really going bad. I need to get on a call with you. And you, as a CEO, absolutely have no idea what's happening. Right? You had like, okay, who is this person? Uh, you know, I've never interacted with this person, of course, because things have gone wrong. The customers, including you in the in the mail, and they want to get your attention as well. You have absolutely no context as to what's happening. So if Zoho Mail, and you're also someone who uses Zoho's customer experience platform, for example, something like Zoho Desk, Zoho Mail is integrated in built into Zoho Desk so that you just have to click on the Zoho Desk button. And every ticket that's associated with this person immediately you know, pops up in your Zoho Mail interface as well. So now you know, okay, this person has been, uh, you know, ran around by the team, he's been shuffled back and forth between multiple uh, teams within your own company. And now you have much better context as to why this person is unhappy. Now you can just probably go and uh, schedule a call with that person as well. If you're looking to grow your business, not just from email, you want to you know, start using the entire suite of products, that also is a better expansion option for you. Zoho Mail also works with the other collaboration apps that we have. For example, this is the Zoho Workplace interface that you're seeing right now. So you can just probably drag and drop attachments from one place to another. You know, we all use not just emails, but we also use the other forms of communication today, including chats and, you know, posts and intranet and things like that. So a drag and drop feature between these functions in the same interface is also something Zoho as a whole provides in a unified interface as well. So Zoho Workplace, for you who is not 
uh, aware of things uh, what Zoho Workplace is. It's a collaboration, unified collaboration, communication, productivity suite that we have, in which email sits in the center of it, which we have the collaboration aspect, we have your flexibility aspect, which means people can work from anywhere they want. Uh, so it doesn't matter which location or what, what time they have. We have our video conferencing apps. We have a white mode. We have messaging and things like that for people to work however they want from wherever they want to add that flexibility into the, the to, to the workplace. And of course, we also have the happiness factor or your belongingness factor, which you know can give you town halls and people actually feel like they belong to the office as well. So if you, of course, if you are interested in to know more about Zoho Workplace in specific, please do let us know in the chat tab or the question tab as well. We'll do uh, more content around that. So finally, uh, this is probably the most important reasons bigger enterprises move to us. Zoho is actually a company who is committed to your growth right from the onboarding all the way to the migration and training. Like I said, a lot of our customers who move uh, to Zoho Mail and Zoho Workplace code this as the number one reason. One of the reasons they, they they like working with us is because we have a genuine interest in ensuring that you have a smooth transition. That's something, these are, these are words not picked by me, but these are words that are picked by some of our customers itself. So uh, we have everything from a built-in migration tool that you can migrate yourselves, how many ever accounts that you have, either from your existing um, uh, legacy servers or from the other third-party clouds as well. And we also have free migration assistance. That's what uh, the more interesting part that I'm going to be talking about. Also, Priyanka will be talking about where we will do the migration for you as well. Doesn't matter if you have five years of data, seven years of data. We ourselves, the team, is interested or invested in uh, uh, you know making your transition to Zoho as smooth as possible as well. So that's also an, an option that's available. Let's take a case of. Fusion Microfinance, for example, uh, they're a popular uh, microfinance MBFC company in the in the in the country. Uh, they had a requirement where they wanted to move over five years of data uh, just very quickly towards the end of the year. They wanted to move, make a move. They 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 their you know management decided that you know this is not happening. We want to move from uh, something like a Google Workspace all the way to uh, Zoho Workplace. So. They came to us, of course, the POC period and everything kept happening much prior to that. So you can uh, considering they are an NBFC company, of course, you know, financial companies have their own restrictions and their own security assessments as well. So from the POC stage, they started over to the security assessment stage, which also, you know, they found that we are complying with a lot of the uh, uh, requirements that NBFC, MFI, and the other people had, the other bo bodies had in terms of security. Uh, from there, they started the migration process. This is where things really got interesting, right? So what really happened was that uh, the folks at the company went home on a Friday evening. On a Monday morning, when they came back, they were actually migrated. All 2,600 of them uh, were migrated in phase one. Of course, they have much more employees than then. They just chose to move 2,600 at first. This was over five years of data, which was migrated in less than two days. Actually, I put two days here, but even lesser than that. So I we, we had a dedicated team you know, uh, appointed for uh, the company to help them migrate the data on their behalf. Uh, this was done, like I said, they went to work on a Friday evening. Uh, our teams worked on the weekend because they wanted to make sure, okay, they were expecting some kind of a downturn as well. As usual, when they're moving years and years of data and, you know, GBs and TBs of data, they were expecting some kind of a uh, downtime as well. But thankfully, our team was able to sort it out for them. And then they're really happy with the way things have happened as well. After migrating, we were also able to kind of onboard and handhold them uh, there and the rest of the employees as well. Of course, they do have Zoho champions within the company who were able to help their own employees. But after that, we did provide customized training for them, a live uh, Q&A, a live webinar and things like that. And along with the other uh, transitions, all of this happened in a period of two days. That's the probably the most important aspect that you'll have to notice. And this is something that if you speak to other existing Zoho people, Zoho clients uh, or customers that you come across, I'm sure they will also have a similar story to see, so, you know, speak about as well. But why is Zoho really doing this, right? Okay, Zoho is, uh, why is Zoho really committed to kind of, uh, why by seeing that Zoho is committed to your success? It's 
purely for the reason that every money that we make, in fact, everything, my salary, her, my Priyanka's salary, everybody's salary that we get is literally from the money that we are earning by selling your software. Okay, selling our software to you. So that's basically how our business model works. If you see or just compare it to the uh, the kind of investments the other companies have, um, Zoho's entirely into what we're doing right now. We do not you know, earn any of the money or any of the income that comes by selling your data or running ads into your products as well, which kind of makes it more important and more uh, relevant to our employees across our uh, you know, uh, offices across the world that we're just really committed for our employees' success so that, you know, we grow as well as uh, the, the the customer and we grow together along the way as well. So that's around the why part. Uh, I hope if you have questions, feel free to, you know, uh, you know, drop your questions on the questions tab. I'll just hand it over to my colleague here, Priyanka, who will take you through the how to move part. Okay. So, uh, so you will have a lot of doubts with, uh, you know, if you wish to move to Zoho Mail and with all that Rakib has covered now, definitely all of us here would be intrigued and we will want to, you know, choose the platform and see how it works for us. But there is again a lot of question hanging there and that could be, all right, this platform is really good, but if I want to migrate my data, will there be any data loss or uh, and how would I go about it and what are the methods you have in store, etc.? Or if you uh, even think like, maybe I want to experiment with this platform before I move and migrate my data. And if I want to experiment, is there a way to do that? So with all of these uh, questions in front of us, we may not take the next step at all. And here I come for your aid where I'm here to address all of those doubts for you. The first um, concept that I want to cover is coexistence. Coexistence is a concept that allows you to um, add your users in both the servers. That is, let's say you're using Google, okay? So you can have a set of users in Google and also add a different or the same set of users in Zoho Mail as well. And once you do that, you can route your emails, which is email routing. And with that method, you can start to experiment our uh, email provider as well and see how it works for you. In this concept of coexistence, we have two different methods that is split delivery and dual delivery. Okay. What is split delivery? Is that split delivery allows you to add certain sets of users in Zoho Mail and the rest of the users, that is different set of users can stay back in your previous provider itself. So when you do that, when the email starts to come in, if at all the users are there in the previous provider, the emails will go to them directly. If they are not present there, but rather they are present in Zoho Mail, then the emails will be routed to Zoho Mail. So this way you can familiarize with the environment, see how the platform works and see how enhanced the collaboration works, how clear you can communicate in this platform and then choose the platform. Apart from this use case, I also would like to discuss some other use case like rather than just familiarizing with the environment, you can also uh, use this method if at all you have some individuals who are reluctant to change. They are very accustomed to the provider they've been using and they don't want to change, but you want to move the rest of the users. In that case as well, you can move the rest of the users and configure split delivery for your organization. And then you have purpose specific which is, let's say you want to uh, have your administrative users alone in a different server and the rest of the users in a different server. In those cases as well, you can use split delivery. And last of all, for external purposes, such as, such as commercial purposes, let's say you have um, contractors who you hire temporarily, but you have to provide them an email address. In those cases, if you don't want their uh, data to be stored in your server, you can again choose this method of split delivery and have their data in a different server and your organization data in a different server. So these are all use cases where you use this method. And one of the main uh, reasons we promote this method is to see how our platform works and then you can start your migration. So once you are accustomed with our platform. Another method I would like to discuss under coexistence itself is dual delivery. 
Dual delivery is a concept where a copy of a mail will be residing in both the servers. Okay, let's say an email comes in. You will configure the same set of users in both the servers and a copy of a mail will be sent to both the servers. This way again, it will be easier for you to see how the security aspect works in both the servers and how every feature reacts in both the providers. All of these comparisons can be done and then you can choose which provider suits you the best. And again, in this concept as well, you have different use case. One is to familiarize. And then if you want to safeguard your workflow against interruptions. So if you are a person who does not want to take chances with the server issues, et cetera, you can again save your data in two different servers and make use of this method that is dual delivery. And then you have, if you want to go hand in hand with a migration process, what is that is, let's say you love a platform and you've started migrating to a platform. What we need to understand is sometimes we will want to migrate first and then change the MX records to Zoho. So when you do that, the day when you start initiating the migration process, all of the data which was sent and received before the initiation will migrate. Okay. And let's say the migration is taking about three days to complete. So for those three days, whatever mails are sent and received have to be brought back as well. Right. So you you have to uh, enable this dual delivery that is configure dual delivery. So what happens those three days, whatever mails are being sent and received will be, you know, sent a copy to our servers as well. And as per the migration process, whatever data that was sent and received before that will also be brought to the servers. OK, in that way, this particular method of dual delivery goes hand in hand with the migration process. And last of all, you have archival server. So if you wish to have a different server for archival purpose, you can again make use of this concept of dual delivery. But what do we need as a prerequisite for doing this method is you need to choose which method you want to use that is split or dual delivery. And according to that, you need to have the admin credential of both the provider's account. That is the, if you're using Google, you have to have the Google account admin credential and Zoho accounts admin credential. And the domain to be added for split or dual delivery to process. And last of all, the users to be added under that domain. So all of these informations and prerequisites are required in order for you to do these particular methods. So if you wish us to do it for you, all that you have to do is for you to move forth. You have to contact presales at zohomail.com and we will do this process for you. So uh, once we initiate it and once we complete this process for you, it's just a matter of seconds for it to work. OK, and uh, once this is done, the email routing will just work fine for you. This is one concept and that is coexistence. The next concept is migration. So let's say you love a platform, as I already told, and you are all OK to migrate to a platform. So what methods or strategies that we have in hand to provide you in order for you to migrate your data is one click. That is the first method. And one click migration. G Suite and O365, that is Microsoft 365 users, can migrate their data. Then we have server to server migration, which is for every server there is, you can migrate your data from the previous server to the Zoho Mail server. And last of all, you have Exchange Migration Wizard, which is a tool that allows you to migrate data that is in the format of EML or PSD. Okay. Now let me discuss each of these methods in a little bit detail. So when we talk about one-click migration, this particular method is exclusive for Google Workspace and Microsoft 365. That we need to understand. And for those users, when do you choose the first method or the second method is that when you have high volume of users, 
uh, when you have thousands of users or maybe even more than 500 of users, it is better to go with this method is because uh, it is easier for you to migrate since only the admin credential is required and not the user's credential for you to migrate the user's data. And another use case is data specific. If you wish to migrate mail, calendar and contact such data, then you have to choose one click migration because the next method that we're going to discuss will only allow you to migrate mail only data. So let's say you choose this method and you're wishing to start your migration. So what are the prerequisites that you will need is the Zoho's admin account credential is needed. Existing providers, admin access is something that you have to have. The DNS access and the data to migrate. Okay. So these are all the prerequisites that you need to have in order for you to perform one click migration from Google Workspace or Microsoft 365. Let me just show you a quick view of how this process is done. Let's say if you want to do it yourself, I just want to show you how quickly it is done. And if you even if you want us to do it for you, we're all uh, okay. And it is completely free of charge for you for us to perform it for you. Okay, so this is the admin console. And on the left side, you will find data migration option okay you can click on the create button and let me say one click migration i wish to do it for office 365 or microsoft 365 and you just have to sign in to your account okay it will direct direct you to the page where you have to paste your username and password of your admin account and you can click on add and then you go to the settings page where you can choose the data you wish to migrate and the folders and emails you wish to migrate. Then moving to add in the create page, you're allowed to choose the storage limit and the maximum connection limit. Maximum connection limit is nothing but uh, the, how many members you want to migrate simultaneously is something you can specify according to your server capacity. And you can click on create. And then you go to the user section and there is where you will add your users. Here, when you see, you need not have the credential of all the users at all. You just have to click on the drop down, you know, search for the person you want to migrate from that server. So I've listed with the set of users. Let's say I'm, um, I'm migrating from Microsoft 365. So whoever are there in the Microsoft 365 account is shown here and I'm choosing one user. And in the destination email address, I will be listed with user accounts I have created in Zoho Mail. Okay. And I can simply search for the person and I can click on add. Once I click on add, I can start the migration. Okay. It is simple as that. So this is about how one click migration is done. So uh, server to server migration is where. Uh, even if you are a Google Workspace user, a O365 user, or any other server users, you can use this method to migrate your data. Okay. In this method, if you're having a less number of users, such as three to 10, it will be easier. So uh, if you have even more than that, you can migrate uh, using the batch wise migration method. Okay. You can, you have simple steps here. And again, one, we, one thing we need to understand is only mail data will be migrated using the method server to server migration okay and the prerequisite that you need to have in hand in order for you to perform server to server migration is the zoho admin account credential is needed the dns access is needed a csv file with the user data should be in hand the CSV file with the user credential. Since we already discussed server, server to server, this method of migration requires you to have the credential of all the users you wish to migrate, okay? And the folders and emails you wish to migrate is something you need to have, okay? Let me again show you a quick view of how this particular method of migration is done. So click on create. I'm again back into the admin console into the data migration section. I clicked on create and I'm going to perform a IMAP migration or server to server migration. 
okay in the protocol or application i'm going to choose imap and for gmail is what i want to perform the migration for in the settings page i am not shown the data at all because as we know in this method only mail data can be migrated i can choose the folders and emails i wish to migrate I'm going to choose add and again i'm left with the connection limit and storage limit i have to choose according to my preference and that's it the configuration part is over and in the user section you can click on add and here can you see there is a password that i need to fill for every user that i wish to add right let me just show you how that is done as well and the password make sure to copy paste the app password and choose the destination email address and add so once you add the users you can start the migration so this is very simple and that's about how you will do imap migration and third method is exchange migration wizard which is a tool if you wish to do it yourself then you can download and install this particular tool and do it okay using this particular method you will be able to migrate your psd files and eml files okay the prerequisites that is needed is the tool addition to that you need to have the admin credential of soho a csv file with the user data the data to be migrated should be known and the folder details of the users that you wish to migrate okay you need to know all of these information in order for you to uh, use the exchange migration wizard tool to migrate the psd or eml files okay so all of these methods can be done by you as well but if you want us to perform this these methods for you it is free of cost and we are very happy to do it for you and all that you have to do is you can simply contact presales at zohomail.com and once done you have to provide us with the prerequisites for the respective methods so once we have the prerequisites and we start with the migration process and once the migration pro uh, once the migration process is done you will find all of your data in your new servers and you can go forth with using it okay and we wanted to show you some of the faqs that we uh, attended in those webinars so it will be easier for you to get some answers right here so you may have a doubt is it possible for the migration accounts to have different domains or do they need to be the same no the domains can vary even the accounts or email ids can vary it's just about you choosing the source email address and the destination email address and how much time will it take to migrate your data is uh, we cannot say a defined time at all because it depends on the volume of data the number of users you're wishing to migrate and it is also depending on another server that is not the provider's server right but approximately i could tell you that in a very recent uh, time we were able to migrate a data for a user uh, who had about 1 gb per user and we migrated about 6000 users per week so that is a very very uh, appropriate uh, is that that i can give you but it totally depends on the server's capacity and the number of users you have and the volume of data and then what is the duration of downtime for migration the downtime is zero there will be no downtime at all because since it is a server to server migration the concept of downtime does not come at all in migration is there a risk of data loss during the migration process again the answer is no because only a copy of a mail will be migrated from the previous server to the new server so here again you will not have any data loss at all what about google files such as spreadsheets presentations and documents can they be migrated yes uh your google drive files and all of these data in your google uh, drive can be migrated to zoho work drive there again we have a migration process which allows you to bring all of your files from uh, google uh, google drive to zoho work drive 
Can we upgrade storage for certain uses alone if needed? Yes. We provide additional storage units from 25 GB to 100 GB. You can uh, buy those storage and allocate it to certain sets of users. Or if you wish to uh, upgrade your uh, plans to certain users, that is again possible as Rakib already discussed with you about the flexible plan where you can have certain sets of users in one plan and the rest of the sets of users in a different plan. You can mix and match the plans as well within one organization. Then if the migration stops due to some technical issues, should I start the migration process again from scratch? Absolutely not. Uh, when you are resuming the migration, uh, the migration only starts to uh, bring in the males which are yet to be migrated, and it will not migrate the males which are already migrated. Last question, if my storage gets full in the middle of the migration, what happens? Your migration will pause if your storage bloats up, and you can remove some unwanted emails, and you can resume the migration or you can upgrade one of the plants that provides you with extra storage and you can resume the migration. Again, when the resume of migration comes into place, only the emails that are yet to be migrated will start migrating and the mails which have already migrated will not be migrated again. So I think uh, we've done with the FAQs as well. I would like to show you some of the sweet, sweet words our customers has given us and I would like all of you to see them. and. Thank you so much for joining the session.